Hi, everyone. My name is Emil Hoskinson. I am director of quantum annealing products at D-Wave. <clears throat> I've been at D-Wave uh, over a decade now. But this is actually the first Qubits conference I've been to. And so far, I'm finding it very, uh, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> Just a little while ago, Bob Sorensen made a, a comment that I thought was interesting. He said that the end users don't really take care about the technology and modality. They care about performance. They care about the results that they get. Well, so I work in the development of the technology. I very much care about the technology, where it's going, and the particular modality. <clears throat> and I think I could argue that as a end user, if you're going to devote resources into developing applications using a particular modality, that you want to have some confidence that that modality is going to flourish. It is going to grow. It is going to become more powerful. It is gonna, it's going to stay around. So that's really what my talk is about. That's what I do at D-Wave. I focused entirely on the technology on the development of next generation technology, on understanding how to ensure that we build the foundation for scalability. The Advantage 2 system will be, we'll see improvements on all key metrics, okay, over our current generation Advantage system. That includes the number of qubits, It'll have more than 7,000 up from 5,000 on our Advantage system. It'll have higher connectivity. Every qubit will be directly connected in a programmable way to 20 other qubits on our Advantage 2 system up from 15 on Advantage. <clears throat> Those qubits will be arranged in the Zephyr topology. This is how the qubits are, are arranged, and it's very important in determining the complexity of the problems we can solve. Our new topology is codenamed Zephyr, and that will allow us to solve more complex problems than, than ever before. <clears throat> the Advantage 2 system will have a higher energy scale. So energy scale, uh, what, what it means is the solutions we get back for a particular problem have an energy. Uh, you, can, you can translate that into cost, essentially. It's the cost of implementing a solution of an optimization problem. The energy scale sets the differences between the high quality solutions with low energy and higher energy solutions. <clears throat> we want the lowest energy. That scale makes it easier to find those low energy solutions. It also boosts precision. So energy scale plays an important role, and Advantage 2 will have significantly higher energy scale. As uh, Mark spent some time describing, Advantage 2 will also have significantly higher coherence. Now, coherence um, is an interesting word. I think the easiest way to understand it is, is basically it means lower noise. Okay, noise can corrupt your solutions. It can inhibit the quantum annealing algorithm. We want noise to be as low as possible. That gives us high coherence. The coherence particularly refers to the ability of, of quantum to enhance the, the power of, of uh, optimization in a, in a quantum annealing algorithm. So higher coherence enhances the effectiveness of quantum annealing. And I'll go into that in a little more detail. I'll start with the higher connectivity of the Advantage 2 processor. Uh, this is a, a simple depiction. On the left, in the center, there's a single qubit surrounded by 15 of its closest neighbors in the Advantage Pegasus topology. This is our current generation. <clears throat> On the right, again, in the center is a single qubit. Now it's surrounded by 20 nearest neighbors. The interaction between that center qubit and its neighbors are all programmable. And the arrangement of the qubits is now our, our new Zephyr topology. This depiction is created by our, pr our problem inspector, which is available as part of the Ocean SDK and within the LEAP IDE. 
A slightly more complicated example. On the left, we have a, a, the graph of a problem that we want to solve. <clears throat> it has 16 variables arranged in a K88 bipartite graph. This is essentially two groups of eight qubits with full connectivity between them. Actually, a more conventional way of drawing this graph would be to just to have two groups of eight qubits with connections between all of the qubits in one group and all of the qubits in the other group. In this case, the inspector chose to draw the first group of eight qubits in the middle. It split the second group into five on the top and three on the bottom. Not quite sure why I did that, but it's the same problem. This logical problem that we want to solve, okay, we refer to the original problem that we want to optimize as a, as a logical problem, may or may not embed natively in the graph of a given processor. And what I mean by that is that the native programmable connectivity between the qubits may not be sufficient to be able to pose that problem uh, with, only the, the, with only a single qubit per variable. In that case, what we do is we use multiple qubits for each variable or for some of the variables in the problem. Using multiple qubits allows us to increase the, the, the connectivity and that allows us to embed more complicated problems. So in the middle is an embedding of this K88 problem in the advantage Pegasus topology. Uh, in that case, it requires 20 qubits with some pairs of qubits representing logical variables. <clears throat> in the advantage two architecture, this problem actually doesn't embed natively. So we can use one, cu one qubit per variable 16 variables in total, and the arrangement is uh, in our new uh, part of our, our new Zephyr topology. Okay. Now, again, as uh, Mark Johnson measured, mentioned just before me, um, we released a prototype of our Advantage 2 system uh, back in June last year. The Advantage 2 full scale system is very much on track. Uh, we plan to release it in the 2023-2024 timeframe. And this early demonstration of a prototype shows that the, 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 uh, the program remains on track. Um, it includes a lot of the key features of the advant full Advantage 2 system, but not all of them. Okay, it's, first of all, it's smaller scale, has about 500 qubits. Full scale system will have more than 7,000. <clears> It does have the higher connectivity, 20 couplings per qubit. It also has the higher energy scale and the Zephyr topology of the full Advantage 2 system. What it doesn't have is the higher coherence yet. Uh, despite that, this system, which is available on Leap, anyone can go and try it, uh, is already outperforming the current generation Advantage processor on problems that fit within this smaller graph. So, so that's great. We have a prototype, and it's, the results are very encouraging. So the question is, what, what's next? Um, <clears throat> okay, I skipped ahead. This slide, I'm actually performing a comparison of performance on our Advantage system with the Advantage 2 system for a given problem called an not all equal three set problem. I've chosen one instance of this class, the not all equal three set problem. And uh, this instance that I've chosen has 75 variables. And it has 225 clauses. Okay, what that means is that clause is a condition between a triplet of variables that those three variables cannot have the same value um, in the solution. That's not all equal three set, okay? So for this particular problem, uh, it cannot be embedded on either the Advantage Pegasus topology or the Advantage to Zephyr topology na natively. 
That means we need to use multiple qubits for each variable. <clears throat> so what I've shown on the left here is the number of qubits per variable in a histogram um, that we used in, the, in order to embed these problems, this, this particular problem on the two processors. So the number of qubits is also, we're also referring to that as the embedding chain length. So the x-axis here is the number of qubits we use for a given variable. Uh, smaller is better. So the orange curve for the Advantage 2 prototype is shifted to the left. That means the embedding is more efficient than the current generation Advantage 2 system in blue. I took that problem and I ran it 100 times on each processor. <clears throat> and I computed the energy of each of those solutions and I histogrammed, on the, histogrammed them on the right. Now, remember, energy corresponds to cost in an, in an optimization problem. So we want as low as possible. And in fact, the Advantage 2 prototype uh, returns lower energies in almost all cases and has a significantly lower energy, uh, it's significantly higher quality solutions um, on average. <clears throat> So this is great. This demonstrates this is an actual demonstration that anyone can go and run on uh, via Leap on the prototype. And it shows a significant improvement. So now, what's next? <clears throat> what's next is uh, a significant improvement in coherence. When we released the prototype back in June, alongside it, we published a white paper showing that we were able to improve coherence in isolated qubits on specialized test circuits using a new fabrication process that we developed. <clears throat> okay, that was great. Uh, but now, this new data demonstrates that we're able to achieve the same coherence improvement for qubits inside a processor. That may sound like a subtle distinction, but it's actually a significant step forward. That integration step is a big one. And it, it really demonstrates that we are going to be able to achieve this on the, in the full Advantage 2 system. So on the left, we have a measurement of flux noise in a qubit as a function of frequency. <clears throat> now, flux noise is a dominant source of decoherence. Or again, you can translate high coherence into low noise. We want to reduce this noise as much as possible. So the red curve on the top is a measurement of flux noise in the Advantage 2 prototype, the same system that is online now. <clears throat> the blue curve is a recent result of measurement of flux noise using our new fabrication process for a qubit within a processor. So this is, this is fantastic. It's, uh, the flux noise is reduced by about a factor of four. The plot on the right is also a verification of lower flux noise. This is called a macroscopic resonant tunneling measurement. Basically, flux noise increases the width of the peaks in the data. So what we, what we want to see for higher coherence is narrow peaks, and that's exactly what we see with our new fabrication process. <clears throat> this, this data also demonstrates that the reduction in flux noise extends to higher frequencies which we also want. So we're very excited to uh, integrate this into the full-scale Advantage 2 system. I want to give you just, just one example of where co coherence can have a significant impact on results, and that is uh, lattice problems. <clears throat> this is work that we did in collaboration with Los Alamos National Laboratory. And it's an example of a lattice problem in which variables or qubits are arranged in a regular pattern. And what you should be thinking of, thinking of is of atoms in a, in a crystal lattice. That's you know, exactly the kind of thing that we want to study. In this case, what we want to study is exotic quantum states of matter. <clears throat> the degree of coherence. Uh, dictates how, uh, the, the degree to which we can study these 
exotic quantum phase of matter, discovering new materials. And uh, there's all kinds of, of, of things we can do with this. <clears throat> I chose this particular example because it also highlights the value of increased connectivity. This work was actually done in the D-Wave 2000 Q system. In that system, it required four qubits per spin variable to embed it on the processor. <clears throat> Going to advantage uh, with a more efficient Pegasus topology, it only required two qubits per variable. For the Advantage 2 system, <clears throat> we're gonna drop that by another factor of two, and for this problem, it'll only be one qubit per, per spin. And in, in addition, we'll have this massive increase in coherence, and uh, we'll be able to do all kinds of new things with it. Advantage 2, is all about taking quantum com computation to the next level. <clears throat> it's, all, it's also all about following this path that we've laid the foundation for, for continuous scaling of this technology to more and more powerful uh, processors, solving more and more complex problems. <clears throat> I'll leave you with this slide again. You can, you, can, uh, you can test out these processors for yourselves on the, on the LEAP system. Thank you.